All right, big guest today, Renee Tassoni, former Minnesota twin in the MLB, former longtime member of Team Canada. Two special facts about Renee Tassoni. Number one, he's the only person I've ever seen hit a hole in one in a golf course, <laughs> and it was a par four. With Number, my driver. With the driver, it was yeah. pretty insane. Number two, first person ever to hit a bomb at Target Field, correct? Uh, by a twin. By a twin. Tassoni Still a pretty cool stat. Yeah. Uh, right Renee, fan. tell us a little bit about Tassoni yourself. Tassoni you want to know about me? Yeah. Where do you want to know? Where I grew up. Yeah, where'd you grow up, Renee? Uh, I was born in Toronto and then moved out to BC when I was six. I grew up in Port Coquitlam, south side. Coquitlam Reds? I was a Coquitlam Red, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I played there for four years and now I'm currently coaching with them. What uh, position did you grow up playing? Uh, what do you think? Second base. Short. Short? Yeah, okay. short, short and catcher. How and, was where, and where'd you play in the big leagues? Left field. Left field. How was that transition? Uh, it was. Is the, is outfield tough. fun in the big leagues? Like, it's outfield is fun all the time. But like when I was in the minor leagues, I played right field and center, okay. right? So I so rarely easy. played left field. Oh. And then so a, a week before I got called up, I was playing left field, and I was like, "Why the hell am I playing left field?" And then I found out somebody got hurt, and <laughs> I had an opportunity to play in the big leagues in left field, and that's kind of how I got out there. Might as well play there, right? Don't yep. want to tell the coach no. <laughs> um, we're going to play a special clip of Renee. Actually, maybe two special clips, but the first one's a very special clip. We're going to play it right now. World Baseball Classic. Let's do some baseball. Top nine. Canada up 9-3. Chris Robinson lays down a bunt That's single. Pretty. Luis Cruz fields the ball, then motions for pitcher Arnold Leon to hit the next batter. First pitch inside on Renee to Sony. Second pitch inside again that was like an 80 mile per hour fastball third pitch off Take the back benches clearing some pushing some shoving tyson gillies gonna take down alfredo acebus who gets right up and chases gillies oh wow Look at that takedown but acebus is a big dude jay johnson gets to acebus starts throwing punches oh look at this this, this is, is this a family is a feud. baseball classic haymakers on both sides, Asavis being held back by Larry Walker. Sergio Romo is going to start staring people down. Trash. You know, usually these two don't have any problems between them, the United States. But you know, when Canada and Mexico come together, look at the things that happen. And the fans are throwing things onto the field. Already taking a round off the, a couple rounds off the tee, so we're just going to do one round here. Yeah. Um, Renee, what are you going to do off the tee? What do you what do you like to do right before you hit? My routine is always come in, hit five, ten balls up the middle, and then I just kind of move the tee around. Uh, I usually go middle, away, in, and then finish away. And it's honestly 25 swings-ish. Yeah. Yeah, I move the ball up and down. Uh, it depends on how I'm feeling too, right? So uh, I don't like taking a lot of swings before BP. Yeah, just keep it short and simple. Yeah. Get the feels down. Yeah, and that like, yeah, everybody's got to work on something, right? And that just kind of gets me locked in before a game. I don't know. I like to concentrate on like my balance on the backside, right? Have you ever done like the step back drill? Yeah, right. I'm in the same boat right now. I'm I'm trying to stay a little bit more balanced on the backside. Yeah. And... Strong through the back leg. Yeah. I don't know. What, I can't generate the power that I used to. It's probably like your given. swings right there, are 94. I could. I'm sitting at like 88. I feel like it's just because you haven't swung in a long time, though. Yeah, yeah maybe. I mean, if, in a couple of weeks, you're going to be like, if you swing consistently. God bless. God bless. Or do you say call yes? Call yes. Are you recording right now? Yeah. No. Influencer. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not. What do you like to start with on front toss? Uh, just middle away. Middle away? I, that's kind of my whole routine. You might want to put the mic on the other side so you can see. Or can you see? I don't like, I don't want it on that, on the camera. I can see. Okay. Like having a helmet on. True. Or I could so mid, just middle away. Yeah, just middle away. Just okay. I'll move the ball around. You just you just you just throw it. You just Can go you down the middle, it? please. That ball's crushed. Sorry. Oh, out front. Oh. All right, we switched up the field to uh, target field in honor of uh, the first ever home run by a Minnesota twin, Renate Sony. Not a home run. Grand yeah, I didn't even switch it yet. Actually, I'll switch it right now. <laughs> Not Joe Maurer to the Hall of Fame, Renate Sony. 
Yeah, what the hell is that all about? He's, Mauer, who he's you ever pretty good. In? He's special. Pretty sick. Ay, coño. Ay, coñazo. That's too low. Gems. One more, oh, one more, no. one more. Well, I was just saying, like, because I haven't hit in a while, like, I just feel like I'm dragging the bat through with my strong hand, which yeah. is my thorn hand, and my left hand, I'm just not, like, getting that power. I'm right? in the same boat. It's just not, yeah, like you said, like, I feel like this is just dominating so much, and the top hand is just, like, along for the ride. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? And that's how you want to create that power to the gap, right? Yeah. Yeah. Something you could do in, like, a round like this to get that top hand going, like, would a driveline bat, one of the driveline bats help? Uh, I personally like to do the one-handed bats. Okay. So I it's usually do that with, bat. yeah, the short bats. I have like this, a bunch of little bomb bats and I like to do top hand drills. So I like where I stand wide. I prefer off the tee first, right? Just so I can feel the, the right movement and getting through. Mm -hmm. And then we can progress to soft toss. So, and then I just, it just really helps me know where my barrel is and my top hand. Sure. And then I'll flip over to either the weighted bats or my bat and just kind of get going. Yeah. When we were doing the T-work, I was trying to go the other way. I, I couldn't drive it that way. I was like it was The it. barrel was like dumping and you were hitting the T. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah! Middle? Sure. God dang it. That was it'll, nice. it'll come later in the round, trust yeah. me. Such a bad pitch, sorry. Two. Coming out. This hit low screamers, eh? Back to the 34-31 that I was using a 34-32 and I broke it, or uh, I just don't like it. I broke my old bat, which was Renee's. <laughs> so we're gonna go back to 34-31 because my Exabilo is way down. Good start. Oh, I missed it. Cool, yes. Nice. That was real nice. Stay back nice. Yeah. Not that one. That's all right. We're all human. That's a ball. It's a ball, Lachlan. Right, buddy, I swing at everything. Players coach. Nice. Two. Oh, oh man, I was trying to go yard. I could see it. Like in, when you loaded there, it's like. Could you see it? You like did an extra hitch in your back side. Yeah. Settle down. One, one, more, more. one more. One more. Nope. We're going to go a little inside round here. We're going to try to repeat the old uh, home run from Renee Sony at Target Field from 2012. 11. 11. I think you can find the distance on that one, too. Oh, I'll, I'll overlay the video right here. Up to Sony yeah. at the plate. All right. We just need to put a couple right fans field. in. The to Sony lifts one up and out. Oh. Got it. That's too high. Oh. Like, where's your pitch? Like, if you go, every time I've hit a home run, like, if you go back and watch my home runs, I feel like they're there, like, middle in, but they're all there. They're middle out. I just get extended. I mean, and I've hit it. that pitch is easier to pull than an inside pitch. Oh, 100%. I feel like. yeah. No, I agree. That's why I, I yeah. release the barrel and I catch out front. Yeah. But, like, I think I have, like, one homer that was yeah. in, actually inside. Like, if you're getting a pitch on the outside, like, of course, you want to learn how to hit the ball the other way and drive it for some power. But, like, in a game, if you get that pitch out over the plate, you don't have to just slap it the other way. Like you can, you can take a hack at it and let it go. No, like my my approach is to hit it as hard as I can to center. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I'm trying to drive it to center. I know I don't have the power to hit it over the fence in center field, mm -hmm. but if I catch it late, I know I can drive a gap. Or yeah. if I catch it early, I'll put it over the fence. For sure. Right. So that's like my mindset. As soon as I think pull, I lose the outside of the plate. Yeah. Right. And I'm sure you've heard this many times. Right. Like, I'm thinking pull, and I get a good pitch to hit on the outside, but I roll it over. Yeah. Because I'm thinking pull. 100%. Right? That's not it. Nope. Last one. That's not it. That was a terrible round. All right. Renee couldn't uh, replicate his home run swing, so I'm going to do it. Yeah. like it? You like oh, working middle? This, this is my wheelhouse right here. I can't do it. I can't get the feel. Oh. That's middle out. There you go. Get out. Nope. <laughs> nope. Tough. Oh, late. Ooh, See ya. Stay fair. See ya. Is that fair? Yep. 
That's very similar to my home run. See ya. Oh boy. Oh, get out. Get out. Yeah. Jesus. Oh, I rolled I it. I feel like I was catching it so far up front when we were doing this. Oh, I jammed. Yeah? I know that machine's a big thing. Like, when I was, my last year with the Mariners, machine was a huge thing in our batting practice in spring training. Um, I've always had a tough time adjusting to it right away. It takes me, like, three rounds to get loose and, like, finally get my timing and my rhythm. Do you have any tips and tricks to get your timing off the machine? Uh, personally, I hate the machine other than using it for curveballs. Uh, I like right-handed and left-handed curveballs, but like for fastballs, it, it, it's good because you could get the velo that a coach can't give you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like loading much with my lower half. Like if you have a leg kick, it's really hard to time. It's very tough. Yeah, so I'm more of a kind of a rock and, and make sure everything's in sync and, and get my hands going. Cut down the swing a bit. Cut down the load. Yeah, I go straight. Make sure you're getting the barrel. In yeah, the barrel. I'm I right away. Like I'm pretty wide, and then I, I'm watching you put it in. I'm just kind of getting rhythm and throwing my hands, and then like you said, it takes me about one or two or two yeah. or three rounds to to actually have some sort of rhythm. But my lower half usually stays pretty quiet. But oh, Oppo! That one hurt. Oh. I could watch my barrel go yeah. underneath the ball. I don't like it. Go back to like when I was in high school. There it is. <laughs> Just whistling and then lace one in the gap. Yeah, that's what? all I want. Obviously, you were whistling before that ball. You just laced. Is there, was there anything you did in the box that kind of helped you relax a little bit and stay calm? Uh, so your first couple at bats in the big leagues, you had to be pumping with adrenaline. In the big leagues? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So did you, what did you do to calm down? Right there. just kind of knew what I was doing missing-wise. Like, I was underneath every ball. I could see myself, like, on contact, like, hitting the bottom side. And, like, personally, and you know, we were just talking about it, is that my top hand wasn't working very well, right? Yeah. So when I was whistling and just trying, I was just thinking top hand. So actually it was like gripping my top hand more than my bottom hand. I was trying to override yeah. kind of controlled barrel like that instead of like this. Yeah. And then it just kind of felt but like, good. What, but what like, does the whistling do? Like, Cause like for me, I remember a specific game where I was like over three with three Ks or something. And the last at bat I went up there and I said, I said to one of my coaches, Darius, I said, I don't give a fuck about this at bat. Yeah. And I went up there and I absolutely smashed one into right center. And he came off and he was like, that's how you need to hit. Like you need to not care, care as much yeah. and like take the pressure off yourself and just be up there and be free. Yeah, exactly. And I, like the first three or four, I was trying to hit as hard as I could because yeah. we're recording or whatever. Right. And then I just, like I said, I, I wanted to go back to my, my grassroots, my roots that I know I'm simple, strong top hand. Yeah. And I was just whistling, I think just to kind of clear my head, but I'm a big, like take a breath, look at, you know, I have like, my name on my bat. I mm. always look at my E on my mm. name um, my, at the end of Renee, and I just kind of look at. I did the same thing. Breath. I got it from Mark Trumbo. He he used to draw like a dot right below the label, and I started doing that my last couple years hitting. Yeah. And not that I was the greatest hitter, but it. I definitely had my best couple years when I just like cleared my mind every pitch and just like stared at that dot, took a deep breath, and then got back in the box. Yeah, and the, without like the, the aggression, like oh, I'm gonna kill yeah, yeah, this yeah. ball, right? Like I find like if you just you know have a good plan and, you know, be loose, you know, loose is smooth and smooth is fast kind yeah. of thing. Right. And, and then you start just hitting balls. Like you start trying to hit the ball hard and you're tense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't go. I feel my swing feels slow. Dude, I do. I'm, I've been doing that recently. I've been hitting everything right down there. Yeah. So this next round, I'm going to try to take it easy. I'm going to whistle a little bit like Renee and just hit them <laughs> up the middle. You know, I don't hear any whistling. That's ah. what I always do. There you go. Dude, I can feel this bat like Flex. bending. I yeah. know. <laughs> oh, that was so far in. Oh, I'm getting so You're like so a little late. late. Catch out front. I'm so late. Nice. There you go. No, they'll know doubles and stuff. Oh yeah, it, it, it measures everything. It's cool. Okay. We're gonna do a little hit tracks game here. Uh, I know what you guys are thinking, Lachlan, why didn't you? Why weren't you on the Minnesota Twins? You're hitting the ball like 100 miles an hour. I am not a very good situational hitter. I'm a good VP hitter. 
wasn't very good in the game. I feel like I've gotten a lot better now, but we're going to test out our skills here and see who's the master of target field. <laughs> oh. Strike one. Is that oh, an that's an out. Oh, man. That's All an right. out. Yep. Fly ball. Ooh, wow. Good take. Wow. Yep, that's a double in the gap. Single. Ooh. Oh, sit, baby. Two out. Sit. That'll score him. That will score him. Man, this is tough. That's three out. Fly ball to center? Yep. Oh, that might sit. That sits. I got jammed so hard <laughs> there. It's my approach here. Hit a nuke. I gotta put it in two seams. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it came undone. That was embarrassing. That was oh, nice. Double? Gotta be a double. That run should score, no? Nope. You wow. got force okay. him in. Oh my Sack god, fly? jammed. Sack flies Sack in fly. this game? Sacrament fly. Oh. oh. That's gotta be deep. Out? Yeah. That's a hit. Nope. That's gotta be a hit. Wow. Line out. Yep. That's gotta get down. Double. Oh, roll over. Ooh, foul. That's an out. Shit. That might that might get by him. No way. Who's playing center? Wow. Be a double. Please. Yep, that's gotta be. No, that's gotta be a double. I might too. lose this game now. Oh, that's a bullet. Line out. That's an out. Right, due to some technical difficulties with my iPhone storage, the last inning got didn't record. I ended up winning the game on a walk-off single. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> I have the footage on the other phone, but we're going to redo this last inning. I need one to tie, two to win. Okay, good start. That might be caught. No, that's a double, double. though. Oh. Okay, I'm dialed now. This game's mine. Oh, I missed that one. Situational hitting right here, dude. You got a guy in second, less than two out. Fuck. Or nobody out. He moved to third, though. Did he? Yeah. Oh, God. Game over. <laughs> That's a win. Did you hit a homer there? Double. Double. Hey, the ball doesn't lie. <laughs> ball don't lie. Ball <laughs> never lies. All right, that was fun. Um... What do we got for the boys? What do we got for the younger generation of baseball players growing up? What do you mean what we got? Give me some give me give them some advice. How did you get better at baseball? How did I get better at baseball? I put in a lot of time outside of practice and um well just outside of practice. I mean you can't get as many reps as you need if you want to get to where you're you want to get at practice. You know what I mean? You have to go with your father or your mother to the field every weekend and get some extra swings, get some extra ground balls, work on your arm. Um that's something that like just working on my arm, it gave me the ability to be a pitcher after I was done playing a position. So that kind of extended my career a few years. So my biggest piece of advice is just getting that extra work in outside of practice because you're not going to be able to get as many reps as you need if you want to play college or professional baseball. Yeah, exactly. It's like if you go take a piano lesson, right, they're showing you the keys and what to practice on. Yeah. You need to go home and, t and, and practice that. 100%. You, don't, you can't show up next time and feel like you're a better this right yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna be better right so it's like me as well like growing up we had practice that's where i learned my techniques that's where i got my you know my mechanics uh corrected and then i brought it to the park with my friends or with my dad or mm -hmm. whoever was available right and I, like I, yeah you've done tons of lessons just like me and i mean i'm sure you've experienced this before where you'll do a lesson and you guys will figure out something huge with their swing or with their timing or whatever and then they come back the next week and it's the exact same thing and you have to restart because they didn't work on it outside of that lesson. Yeah, and it's super frustrating. It's very frustrating for a coach because we don't want to sit here and repeat ourselves. I'd rather work with someone that's going to get it dialed in during the week so we can work on something new the next time. Yeah.
And like if you need to carry a notepad or whatever, go over what we practice on so you know what to work on. Or after practice, ask a coach, you know, what you need to work on when you're at home and, sure. and, and take the time and take the initiative and, and do it yourself. Um, one other thing I would suggest for you young guys, and we were, Renee and I were kind of reminiscing on the Baseball Canada and Mexico brawl a little bit earlier. I actually skipped my last class in grade 12 to go watch that game. And a big thing that my dad kind of taught me was to respect and really learn about the history of Baseball Canada and the guys that kind of paved the way for us as young Canadians to make it to the MLB or make it to college. Because without guys like this sitting there and grinding all those years and Larry Walker and Stubby Clapp and guys like that, I wouldn't have the opportunity that I had because the scouts wouldn't be coming here. So I think it's very important for you young guys to watch Baseball Canada, watch the World Baseball Classic, tune in and learn about the players that are like paving the way for your generation of players. Because yeah, for sure. And like you said, we, like it wasn't, like you say, I paved the way for you, but there was someone pave, paving the way for, for sure. me, right? For sure. And I look up to guys like Morneau and Lowen and yeah. Russ Martin and those guys, right? I was an 18-year-old, 19-year-old, and you and I watched that game where you got hit and the brawl started. Like, it, those experiences, you, you just never know who you're going to run into. I remember playing in Quebec with Malo, and like my dad was like, you better research this guy and ask him as many questions as possible yeah and we became great friends and we're still great friends to this day shout out jonathan malo um <laughs> one of my yeah. good buddies too. yeah he's an yeah. awesome guy and even if you can't get to that level of baseball but just like you know the the honor of and pride of like you know baseball canada and just being a young athlete in general right like we always rooting for our own country so for sure we're just trying to grow the game all over the place but you know i want to grow it here 100%. in canada yeah. yeah that's why we're doing it Good video, bud. I appreciate having me out. Yeah, absolutely.